Alright, so this is the DC Incentives Podcast And uh, we have a special financial literacy coach in the building Again <laughs> Again, Again, yes it is <laughs> Listen We if, had if, to bring you back, you know yeah, that? Of course we gotta bring you, you back You know that Of course <laughs> Yeah <laughs> Yo, my my yo, if y'all haven't seen it on the last podcast, I advise you to watch that last one. DC and Center's podcast on Chuck Finance. Okay. Mm-hmm. He talks about financial literacy, lobbying. He, he, yo, it's everything. so many everything. It's so much. <laughs> so much information. We had to we had to bring the financial literacy coach right in the back. building right back. <laughs> Let's get it, man. All right. So um let's let's get it started. All right. So I'm I'm a first thing before we get started, pen, pad, paper. Cause right. this one, this this is gonna be the type of episode where you're gonna have to pause it and be like, all right, hold on, what did he just say? Let me rewind exactly. that back. Exactly. Yes, it and is. I'm gonna I'm gonna make sure, you know, it slows down. Cause th- yeah, he's this he's it. a this guy's a beast. This is it. He's a beast. <laughs> all right, so uh Chuck Finance, talk to us. Yes. I, I appreciate you guys <laughs> hyping me up like that. <laughs> I'm a beast. All right. Um, if you did not get a chance to see the first podcast that you guys blessed me with, um, go back and see that um, because I share some information and data. And I want to preface this that that interview was based on you guys. Mm-hmm. If you watch it, I answered your questions. Mm-hmm. So yes. you guys geared that conversation. Yes. So um, I revealed some stuff, but not too much because I didn't know where it was going to go. Mm-hmm. Now that we've been together for a little bit, I can expose some other stuff. Okay. Now that's what it's all about. You have to gauge your audience and make sure you don't lose them. Okay. So now that um, you guys got me back again, and I hope that I did a great job the first time. I definitely but did. now I'm bringing some up. I got some books to prove some of the data that you can go and reference some of the things I'm going to talk about. All right. All right. That's good. So, yeah, he he got some books. If y'all see it on so the screen. I guess this one, what we're going to do is he going to got it. And we're going to bring our questions in as he's got it. Yeah, well, that's good. That's how that. No, what we're going to do is this. <laughs> we're we're going to continue the conversation because Rich and I have been having many conversations since we met facts and rich for somehow he kids me for about an hour and a half a <laughs> uh, 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 content every week somehow a five minute conversation is an hour and a half like, we ask you one more question but yeah. you, you can tell that a person is learning by the questions they yeah, ask yes. and he goes deeper and deeper so i know that he's actually listening but not only listening he's doing his homework Mm. And that's key. Absolutely. One of the things I don't want you to do is I don't want you to believe me. I want you to do the work uh. because I want you to get into the habit of checking your reference points so that if anyone tells you anything, you can have a base and say, okay, so-and-so said this. Let me check to validate what they said. Yeah. That's all there's to it. So we're not getting idolization of anybody or the God of this. No, no, no. We're going to check and make sure that what they're saying is correct. One okay. of the things that I'm going to say is that there are things that are happening in the culture right now on Instagram and on TikTok and all these things. You have a lot of people out there saying a lot of things. Mm-hmm. We haven't said anything. Um, you've noticed that I don't associate myself with certain people is because when I hear and I see their programs, I know that there's a flaw to it. So I just want to say that because what's happening is a lot of them are getting exposed now. Mm. I'm not going to say any names, but a lot of them are getting exposed. Mm. And these are things that I saw a year ago and I'm like, it's going to happen. So that's what saw us to it. And this Mm. is why I say, do your homework. Don't believe me check the resources check the sources to make sure that it's correct information now that i'm giving gotcha okay all right, all right. so I we're going to continue the conversation <laughs> so go ahead rich continue the conversation you ready xavier <laughs> all right let's go all right i gotta i gotta i i gotta hit him with challenge questions okay so it's 2023 2023 we talk about inflation Eggs is nine dollars. Right. Uh huh. Um, the the CPI okay. is uh um is going up. Right. Um. So, what do you think about 
the economy in 2023. Uh, what do you think? How how's that going to go? Is it going to go like? To 2024, like this year, 2023. Well, I, I heard I, we going into a recession, so I'm trying to figure we're out. We're already in a recession. We in mm-hmm. one, okay. So, a recession is when there are two quarters of negative growth. Mm-hmm. So, we're already in a recession. So, what happens is we have to look at who we're watching and who we're listening to and the information manipulation. Okay. That's key. So, if they're telling you we're going into a re- recession, you're thinking that there's still hope. But, but when you say you're in a recession, you start changing your habits and you start changing the things that you're doing. Mm. They don't want you, and I've talked about the powers that be, they don't want you in a frantic mode where you start bugging out. Because when you start bugging out, you stop investing. You start spending money. When In times of crisis, when people start getting scared, they start holding on to money. Mm-hmm. They don't want that. They can't have that. Because remember, they're making money based off what you're doing. Money has to flow, that's the word currency. And if it's not flowing, there's a problem. Mm -hmm. So to answer your question, it's going to get worse before it get better. Mm -hmm. And COVID is part of that, you know, when you talk about supply chain, supply and demand, all of these things. But again, what we're looking at is we're looking at situations that if people are aware of what's going on, they can actually adapt and overcome the situation. Mm -hmm. So that's what it all boils down to, understanding and being real about what's going on. So now, why is the price of eggs eight, nine dollars? When you look at why, it's like, oh, okay, but then there's some stories out there that it's called market manipulation. They're saying that it's being manipulated by the egg farmers. Mm -hmm. We don't know for sure, but understand that this is all a game. And once you understand the game, you adapt, you improvise, you overcome. That's just like the money, uh, the the game Monopoly. Game Monopoly, got it. Okay, so if we so if if you're talking about we gotta we gotta so they're saying like you gotta learn how to play the game. Learn how to play the game, right? And how can we play the game? No, by, about to ask that. Right by reading and studying. Hmm. One of the things that we have to, in, as a historian, we have to look at the history of money. And once you understand the history of money and how money moves around the world, you have a better understand a better understanding of what's going on. The problem is no one taught us how to play the game. And when you start playing the game, you start understanding why certain laws are being passed. You start understanding why certain things are happening worldwide. When it comes to money, you're like, oh, that's why. Got it now. Because historically, this is what's going on and blah, blah, blah. So that's what it all boils down to. Mm-hmm. Understanding the game and understanding the history of money. When you, uh, you know, I, people, when they take my workshops and I go into the history, they think it's boring. But at the end, they understand. Because there's a reference point. Why are these things happening in other countries? It's like, oh, okay, because historically, this was going on, deals were being made across the board. Now I understand what's going on. Yeah. Gotcha. And when, when we talk about, like, you know, knowing how to play the game, so that means that everybody needs to learn financial literacy. It is my theory that financial literacy is the most important skill you need to learn. Gotcha. It is. That's my theory. So you can be a doctor, and if you don't understand financial literacy, you're always going to be broke. If you're making $100,000 a year, but spending $101,000 at the end of the year, you are going to be in a deficit. Mm. So no matter what, if you're a plumber, if you are an accountant, if you are a janitor, if you don't understand financial literacy, you will always be broke. Gotcha. So that's my theory. Mm. Most important thing. So no matter what profession you're in, if you don't understand the numbers, you're going to so be lost. So the best way to start even for a person to step foot into learning financial literacy just to begin is where? Well, we got podcasts now. I was raised on books. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But we have podcasts. We have your podcasts. We have a whole bunch of podcasts out there on financial literacy. Um, there's a difference between investing in financial literacy. Investing is investing. Financial literacy is understanding the game. So I think that when it comes to the financial literacy part, you have to find people that you like that are teaching you about what financial, what financial literacy is. Not trying to sell you 
mm. on an investment, not trying to sell you or get you to invest in something. No, let's teach about financial literacy. And then when you go to make the move, you have a better understanding of what you're about to do. Gotcha. Okay. And gotcha. you have books, you have podcasts, you have- um, YouTube. YouTube, YouTube, but, but again, you have to be very careful. YouTube yes. is so broad, you can't yeah. really narrow it down. And then you gotta figure down. out if this person is a good person to learn from or not. Absolutely. Or they give it, you yeah. the right proper information at that too. But when it comes to financial literacy, you have an idea and understand what you're looking for. So when you hear something different, the question comes, I never heard that before, let me go check the sources and where that information mm. comes from. Mm. That's what it's all about, studying and making sure, again, is the person valid? Yeah. Okay. Uh, any questions before I ask this question? I ask your question. <laughs> all right. We get a pen and a pad, y'all. I'm so serious. Okay. Um, Talk about 401ks, IRAs, okay. traditional IRA, yes. Roth IRA. Right. What's, what's the, what's so, the question you talking what, about? <laughs> so what, what is it and uh, how you, you know, there's some people that put their money into 401ks, IRAs, okay. um, into it, you know, but... Um, they sometimes they get, they do it by themselves, you know, individually. Sometimes they bring it to the employer, but you know they can't touch that money. I've heard, you know, until they're like what fifty nine, fifty nine and a half, and so a half. Is, 59 and a half. Is your yeah. question? Is your question that what it is? Yes. And or what is, is it? it and does it make sense to yeah, do? Does it make yeah? Does it make sense to put it in a four hundred one k IRA? You know, for for retirement. You know. So part two question. So first part is. 1973, 1974, 1975, this is when 401ks and RAs started dropping. Okay. Because at one point in time when you worked for a company, you invested in a retirement, you retired, you got an income mm -hmm. um, based on that retirement. Mm -hmm. That was stopped and then you have to figure out, the government was like, okay, we gotta give them something. So there was something called uh, uh, the IRA, which is uh, individual retirement arrangement. That's the key word. IRA, when you look at the documents, when it comes to the IRA um, website, it's called arrangement. It's not called an account. Mm. So now what a lot of people don't understand is that all these banks and all these other organizations that they're putting money into, they're called accounts. That's what it is. All there are, it, technically, it's a savings account that the banks are actually investing their money with. Mm. So now you're getting upset because you're looking at the numbers and on paper, the value of your portfolio, because that's what they're doing, quote unquote investing, that's what they're being told, the value of their portfolio is fluctuating. It's going up one month and it's going down. Why is that? It's because the investments are going up and going down. Now here's the key. When you understand that you're putting all that money in the bank and they are investing your quote unquote IRA, it's tax deferred, the money is tax deferred. So you're hoping that after the end of the due time, for 59 and a half, you're hoping that your investments have increased. But you, actually, you're yeah, hoping. But you can you're lose hoping. money too. You can yeah. lose money. You, see what you, you can lose but money. But my thing is, when you said tax deferred, can you explain that? Tax deferred means that it's not going to be taxed. When you are an earned income person, you are actually taking money and you're putting it somewhere where the government is not going to tax you on it. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's tax deferred. What they'll do is they'll tax you later on down the road. So now what happens is you are not, when it comes to your adjusted gross income, it drops. Mm -hmm. So now, again, what we're looking at, if I'm making $50,000, but I'm taking $10,000 and I'm putting that into an IRA, the government is not gonna tax me on that. They are gonna tax me on $40,000 now. Now, if I have two children, whatever the numbers are, that drops, you're talking about adjusted gross income. So now I'm gonna be taxed on the money that, quote unquote, is taxable. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. So that's what it's all about. So you're taking money now, they're not gonna tax it, and you're letting it grow, but they're gonna tax it later on down the road. And you're hoping that the investment has grown so that you can eat the cost of the taxes or whatever. But, whatever, see, whatever, whatever. but you said hoping like well, why, why do I need to hope mm -hmm. on I, I need to make sure it's like 
I'm actually making sure I'm, I'm getting putting his money my, back. Exactly, getting and this that, money back. To me, that makes me and, not even want to bother I, to even try exactly. that. It makes me want to go, you why, know what? Why, why am what I other hoping? options do I have? Exactly. Like, what other options do I have? If, that, if that's the case, it brings back to the beginning of what we was talking about on the last episode about I might as well just put my money for to protect to protect myself into uh into a um what is it a, a life insurance policy basically okay? a mutual life insurance policy right. if that's right. the case then right. yeah now, now 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 we're having this is financial literacy now we're having a conversation mm. so now understand that the life insurance company they don't want you to invest money in a quote unquote investment firm because mm. why because it's taking money from them. Mm. Okay, and the investment firm doesn't want you to invest in insurance because why? It's taking money from them. Remember, what one of the key things that we have to look at, and a lot of people don't see, is that behind the office there are fees. If we are not producing, if we're not getting funding, we don't charge fees. So the more funds that we receive from clients, the more fees we can charge. Mm. If we don't have a lot of clients, we can't charge these fees. Gotcha. Because remember, they have to get paid also. Yes. Yeah. That's key. So now when you look at the life insurance policy, it's like, hold on. That may be a better option. But again, you have to look at your own personal life. You have to look at your lifestyle. You look, have to look at what you want your outcome to be. Life insurance policy is great. And I'm happy now because it hasn't been less than 12 months that a lot of people are talking more about life insurance policies now. I've been hearing it a lot yep. more, you yeah. See it a lot more. Uh, you see it a yes. whole lot more, and that's good. But yet and still, we have to make sure that we get the correct life insurance policy. And, and we may have to make sure. The issue right there. Yeah, we have to make sure. That, <laughs> yeah, that was yeah. your question. That was your question last time, and I, I remember still, that. I've still been doing, looking into what's, stuff. What's I the life insurance policy? And that's, and that's the key. So when we look at these things, again, what is the end result? What are you looking for? And what is going to be the outcome? How much is it going to cost? The final mm -hmm. cost. Mm -hmm. Why invest in something when I'm making two percent interest, but you're charging me three percent mm -hmm. for for fees and services? Mm -hmm. Again, this is the fine print that people are talking about. This is the financial literacy part that you have to do the research, you have to do the work to understand that this is a great deal. But who is it a great deal for? Is it a great deal for you, or is it a great deal for me? Mm -hmm. These are keys questions that you have to ask. So going back to the fall one K and IRA, mm -hmm. if um, let's say if we want to put money, you know, in to our employers. Okay. Um, do you think um, the IRA? IRA. We just, yeah, no, we, we, no, we just won't continue. Now, just now remember with the individual retirement accounts. Mm -hmm. Remember, um, there was something called the Great Depression and the. Uh, the stock market crash. Yeah. It wasn't regulated. Stocks weren't regulated by the government. Okay? So what happened was there was a big stock market crash and after that the federal government came in and they created something called the FDIC. They started regulating the markets. Again, this is the historical part. So we understand where some of these organizations come from. Yeah. So what they did was the government said we have to protect the people. So they created something called the FDIC, which is the Federal Deposit Insurance Company, okay? Um, so what, what they also did was they set up these accounts to protect the people. So you had two, you had your commercial accounts and you had your savings accounts. Savings accounts were used by people like us. Commercial accounts were used by rich people, investment accounts. Mm -hmm. So those commercial accounts were accounts that were still being used to invest money in. Savings accounts were not being used to invest money. So you couldn't lose it. So if it's in the bank and it's insured, no matter what happens, you're supposed to get that money back mm -hmm. as long as it's under $250,000. Got it. So that's the key. What happened is there were no stock market crashes since the 1920s. Mm. What happened? Bill Clinton came. He deregulated the banks, which was key. He gave the banks more power now. So what now was the banks started investing those funds any way they wanted to and then there was the big stock market crash and then a whole lot of things happened and larger banks started by getting smaller banks so this is key so understanding what this whole game is about got it so now people have accounts and they don't understand that their quote-unquote savings account is in an investment bank 
and the underlining writing is that those investments that they think they're savings are being used on the stock market. And if they lose it, they're going to lose all their money. Gotcha. So it makes no sense to have a savings account, basically. No. You have to have, well, according, you have to, fi it, but according don't. to financial literacy, you should have a savings account. Mm -hmm. But your savings account should only be three to six months of your operating costs. So if you're operating at $2,000 a month, that's your rent, your car fare, your food, whatever that is, all of that, if it's $2,000 a month, you should have three months, at least three months in the bank for that. Six months is better. Mm -hmm. Everything else should be going to investments that you set up and that you design because you're going to make more money on investments that you set up and you design than having that money in the bank making 0.03%. Understood. Understood. Okay, so going does that, back. Does that, does, that, does that answer your question? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Some yeah. people think we shouldn't save. I don't like the word save. Um, but to be safe, you want to put that in there. And the way the system is, the way the system is, they want to see if you can manage money. That's what they want to see, if you can manage it. What about a high yield savings account? What do you call high yield? Like, you, you know, it, it compounds, but so it, it goes up if, you know, if you just, not just putting I, I, it in I, a... I, I understand what you're saying, but I want to make sure you understand what high yield is. See, again, this is financial literacy. Uh, financial okay. literacy is so about what is, language. Uh-huh. Yield is the percentage yeah. of, quote, unquote, in, in, in interest that you're going to get. Uh -huh. okay? Now, what's high yield to you? High yield to you might not be high yield to me. Do you see what I'm saying? Gotcha. So what would you consider high yield? I don't even know what it is, so please explain. <laughs> well, it's, it's a percentage. It's a, yeah, it's, it's a, percentage. a percentage. So it's like you put your money into like a bank, and the bank gives you money just by parking, parking, right. parking it, you parking meaning, your money into so the meaning, account. So meaning that you words, put money in, and it's like it's interest. Giving right. that interest, interest and they're yeah. giving you that little tiny thing. No, not no, no, no. That's that's a that's a regular that's a regular savings account. Okay. That, yeah, a regular savings account. Bank bank banks is only going to give you zero point zero whatever percent. Yeah. Right. If you put it in a high yield savings account, that's different. Okay. Uh, you're, you're you're getting more of a return on the savings. Yes. Okay. So again, the question is, what is high yield to you? See, high yield to you might be 0 0.05 cents. High yield to me is like, no, that's not going to work for me. Uh, Do you see what I'm saying? We're yes. talking about high yield. You know, again, the banks, it sounds good. But to me, I'm like, no, I can take that and I can put it somewhere. And I can get 12% interest on whatever that's by what investing in something. And again, this is where the financial literacy part comes in. Knowing that, okay... Why would I put it and sit it here when I can move it over here into something else that's going to bring me more of an income? Mm -hmm. That's why I actually what is high yield to you. Because again, we're going by what they say. Okay. High yield to them might be the market standard of, let's say, 0 0.1 or 0 0.2 cents compared to others. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But that's the bank, that's the market. So now, you know what? Why don't I put it in something called real estate? Why don't I put something, an investment or something that's going to bring me more money in a short amount of time? Gotcha. Okay. So, um, do you, th I'm not even going to ask does you. Does that make sense? Yes, yes. it does yes. make sense. I'm not questioning you. It's just that I want yeah, you, you want to me see to un Yeah, how, so you want me to understand. These are conversations Rich and I have throughout yeah. the week. Because my thing is, as an instructor, is to get him to understand the game. And once you understand the game, you can say, okay, I can see what's going on here. Yeah. So why aren't you making these investments? Because that doesn't work for me. You want me to tie up 12 months of my money on a CD account that's only yielding me X amount of dollars. Mm. But then there's inflation that they don't talk about. Okay, because that's going to affect my money. Mm. You know, And then there's the fees. How much fees? So I'm expecting X amount of dollars, but then at the end, after 12 months, well, I'm not receiving that. Well, you didn't read the fine print. Mm -hmm. My that, bad. I'm sorry. That makes so much sense to me. Because recently, I had all these savings accounts, all these different accounts. I wound up closing some of the accounts up. Because okay. I was like, I'm not getting that much back. Right. I'm putting money into this. Zero, and I'm not even getting zero, that much point, back that zero, I need to be one. getting back. Yep. When I could have been putting it elsewhere. Like yeah. I, And I thought about it. I didn't think it 
Now that you say it is, make me think about it the way you right, say right. it. But basically, all in all, that's how I thought. Right. And I was just like, okay, well, I gotta find other avenues, other things I can do. Still in the process of finding all of that out, but this but, is what has been going on in my brain. It's like, what, yo. what you've done is you've opened the door to understand that there's something that you don't know when it comes to financial literacy. Yeah. And that's why you are on the path to getting that knowledge and getting that information. And a lot of people are not on that path. Because yes. there's something called AUM, Assets Under Management. Mm -hmm. So okay. what that means is simply is that you're turning over your assets and so you're having someone else manage it. Remember, they're charging you a fee for that. So if I'm investing your money in a stock or crypto or whatever, and that investment is not going the way we want it, mm -hmm. I'm still charging you every single month for the service fees. Mm -hmm. No matter if you make money or not. I mean, that's I'm still charging you. Like. <laughs> that is, but again, this is why it's always important. When you look, when you look at the, the channels and you look at the markets and you look at the reporters and you look at all these people talking, they're always pushing hope, no matter what, if you yeah. listen to them. Because they don't want people to panic. When people start panicking, what are they going to do? They're going to pull their money out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Pull their money out, oh my gosh, all of a sudden now, we can't charge these fees. Gotcha. Okay. So, I hope y'all learning something. <laughs> um, so, oh, I'm not say right, So, um, <laughs> what is all right? I'm gonna I'm gonna drop this, y'all. I'm gonna drop this. <laughs> what is the five twenty nine? Five twenty nine is the um, school for the school. It's um, it's the it's the investment for schools. Um. For education, education investment grant. Gotcha. Yes. So, what is the pros and cons of a five twenty nine? The five twenty nine the pros again. We're talking tax deferred. Okay. okay. That's the that's the pro. Um, but the con is you have to use it for education. That's it. Mm. You can't use it for anything else. Okay. So I want I want my audience. Okay. So audio, remember what he is saying. I'm telling y'all. So. The con is it's only for education, which That's is that purpose, which right. is that means that I, what what happens if and you said it's only for it can be education for myself or my child or someone else. You can transfer else. it over. Gotcha. That's one. That's one of the things that you can transfer it over. Okay. Gotcha. Imagine this: if my my child is one, my brand new child, and I open up a five twenty nine. And gotcha. 18 years old, the child doesn't want to go to college, doesn't want to go to school. Okay, so what do, do I do? And I don't have any other children. What do I do with that 529? It has to be used for education. Hmm. But a lot of people don't know is that it doesn't have to go to, quote unquote, a college. It can go to something else. Whatever that's education Educating you, got. you. That's what a lot of people don't know. So there are kind of like small loopholes that you can navigate around. But if you don't know this, how can you do it? How can you do it? Yes. So what happens if I use it for, you know, my child, um, you know, in the future, and he wants to, and next thing you know, he doesn't want to go to college. That's and you got. And I have, and I have, and I've been saving for like let's say fifteen years, five twenty nine. What got, happens to my money? That's a good question. I don't know. But see, that's, my no, thing is that's a good question. I don't know. <laughs> did, did, now you see how the game is played. <laughs> Wait, you don't know. Can, you, can you lose that money or? Yeah, because you're not. It's not being used. You lost. You losing it basically. The just purpose sitting of it is for education. So what would make sense? Granted, the child may not want to go to school, but we have trade schools. Right. You have school. You have other things. You could take remember, courses in remember and you different can things. So you do that. You can remember transfer you can it over. Transfer. Damn. You, so you have to just find somewhere That's to transfer crazy. it over. That's crazy. Learn how or to you play can, the game. My thing is, if the kids don't want to go to school, I can't use it right now. Why don't I find somebody else in the family or somewhere? That somebody want to pay? Oh, well, this is worth this amount. You can give me this much money, and here's your go. Well, you, now, you. Now, 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 you, now you got it. Again, gotcha. I'm not, see, again, these are, one, one of the things that we have to understand is that it's like a whole puzzle, and sometimes th there's a key piece to the puzzle mm -hmm. that brings everything into visuals, that one key piece, and that one key piece of data and information, once you have it, it makes sense, everything makes sense. Gotcha. But the thing is, no one's gonna tell you that unless 
that's that in and outs. That's that stuff that. Well, you gotta like, read. You gotta read. Yeah. Every single contract <laughs> yeah, you, you sign. That, that's it. And that's that's it. You gotta find somebody like me. Be like, okay, let me show you this. Blah, blah. Like, why didn't they just say that? Because they're not gonna say that to you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's called assets under management. Yeah. They want to make sure that they can manage your assets. I had uh, someone hit me up the other day. Wanted. A U M and I was like, dude. I mean, really? Come on now. Like, he promised twelve to fifteen percent return on investments, and I'm like, okay. I'm not even going to get into this because you cannot guarantee me ten to fifteen percent. You can't. Mm. You can't guarantee me that. There's no way. Because my question is, if you are doing that, somebody else knows. Yep. Somebody else knows. So if he said 3%, maybe, I'll look at it. 2%, maybe. But again, I'm, I'm like, nah, I, I can do this myself and keep all the profits myself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's, it's, so what, it's all about asking the right questions. Asking the correct financial literacy, asking the correct questions. Okay. Getting the answers that you're looking for. They're not going to freely tell you these things. Unless you mm -hmm. ask the right questions. Unless you ask the, now, ethically, according to the contract, they're supposed to have you as their best interest in mind when it comes to um, financial advisors. It's okay. ethical. Um, but that's a gray area, too, because you can finagle that. Mm -hmm. One thing we talked about this last time I was here was there are a lot of great, wonderful programs on paper, on paper, but there's one thing that they all have. It's the human factor. Mm -hmm. And if there's humans attached to it, something can go wrong. Yeah. If you look at all types of theories, they're great theories, but once you add humans to it, <laughs> something's gonna happen. <laughs> something's gonna happen. Something's gonna fall off the table. Something's gonna fall off the truck. Yeah. Numbers are gonna be mixed up. Mm -hmm. And that's what people have to understand. So that's what it all boils down to. Gotcha. Let's see. Talk about Mr. Financial Literacy here. <laughs> Is there anything else we need to know? Well, there's a whole lot. <laughs> well, well um, you know, what people, our audience need to know? Th well, there's a whole lot. Um, but what I would like to express right now is do your homework. Okay. Don't read one book and call that book the Financial Bible. It's not. There are several, there are many different pieces when it comes to financial literacy and there are many different avenues specialize in what you want to specialize in but have a knowledge of all of it and that's key because what you want to do is you want to be able to understand the conversation at the table if you don't understand the conversation at the table you're going to be took you're going to be robbed you're going to be lost so that's the key so you're able to financially understand the conversation mm -hmm. so that you can ask better questions gotcha. and this is why um, rich is so important because and since the past time I spoke to you the very first interview you've gotten so much better and you're questioning mm -hmm. because you're like wait 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 <laughs> and it's like and you got it and you're going like oh I didn't see that before and it's not going to take an overnight process it takes time because you're reconditioning your brain you're reconditioning. So now they were taught what? Put your money in the bank, save it. Okay, for what? A rainy day. Okay, there's gonna be a rainy day. That's that's a given. But if I'm only making point zero three point zero zero three cents, uh, why well, I can put it in somewhere else. Now we're having a, a larger conversation. Um, bad news is uh, I got a phone call about a couple of weeks ago and situation. Uh, reverse mortgage situation happened and someone called me up and their aunt had a reverse mortgage they found out their aunt passed away around Thanksgiving mm. so they're like what can we do and they got a notice from the lender that they wanted that money up front the balance Wow. because oh. that's the deal with reverse mortgages um, it's a lot of money yeah they're gonna lose a house because they didn't understand the fine print. So always read the fine print, no yes. matter what. Even if so, even if it takes like, but okay. Yes. Even if it takes two hours. Yes. 
read the fine print. And what a lot of people don't understand is that, listen, it's fine print for a reason. <laughs> Go to your copy machine, blow it up, 150, 200. <laughs> so it's not fine print anymore, it's regular standard font. So now read that. So when you read that, you start questioning. And this is why at the very beginning I talked about some of those people out there who have programs. I read their program, I read the fine print, and I'm going like, wait a minute, hold on. And they're like, Chuck, why aren't you getting down? I'm like, did you read, did you read the contract? Did you read the contract? But and they're like, no. I'm like, okay, but everybody else is doing it. I'm like, okay, fine. But then six hundred months later, Chuck, let me tell you what happened. Okay, but did you read the fine print? <laughs> you know, if you read the fine print, you would have understood that that was a possibility of happening. Mm -hmm. So, okay, now this is where I, this is where I got to think to help the audience out. Um, this is where our average person would say, okay. or you would say, all right, Chuck. Now I got to play God's advocate. I don't have time to read a two hour long page okay. of a fine print. I'm just gonna push accept. Okay, got it. Because I'm interested. Got it, okay, got it. Um, so what, I mean, what else you need me to do? I, I don't have time to read. Like, let's say if I'm uh, like Facebook, you know, right. social media. Right. Of course, before you push install, um, right, you, the whole, they, yeah, they have the you have to scroll you agree, you agree, like yeah, right. you have to scroll like right, four right. times in order to push accept, right. Right. Uh -huh. which is that's the fine print contract. Got it. Uh -huh. I don't have time for that. So, what do you want me to do? <laughs> I mean, seriously. I mean, no, it's fine. You don't have time. But when you look at the the effects of not having time, now you can't get mad. He's you right. can't get mad. He's right. Because remember, we're signing contracts. Mm -hmm. You're hitting OK. So you're agreeing to what's being, what's written here. It's not my fault that you didn't read it. It's there in black and white. So now you're upset at me because you didn't see that one line. Mm -hmm. It's there. And this is what companies do to protect themselves. Because they make sure that, by law, information is divulged and is shown. If you didn't read it, that's your fault. Hmm. That's your point. So, um, to answer the question, okay, so to answer the question, we will have to find time to, even if we're at... If it's that important, find time. But remember, what we're looking at is we're looking at habits. Gotcha. Let's make this a habit. Let me make sure I understand what I'm about to get involved in. That's a habit. You're not going to get it overnight, like I said, but if you make it the habit, you know what, let me make sure I take time. And you know what, You know what? okay, let's do this. If a bunch of us are going to do it, you take a page, I take a page, mm -hmm. you know, and yeah. we all... That makes sense. We all break it down. You know, it that doesn't have to sense. all be me, but come on, let, let's do this. Yeah. Because what's going to happen is, did you catch line 33 on page 4? Nah, what did it say? Oh, okay, wait a minute. And if you don't know, you can alter contracts. You can have lines taken out of contracts if you want to. Mm. A lot of people don't know that. Wait, so I can, let's go uh, like a, a staff, like Airbnb, right? right. Got it. I can, um, I'm reading the contracts. And when I'm reading this four-page contract, right. uh -huh. um, you're saying I can like, I can do the line. That's what you're saying. Right. right. Okay. You so can. my question to that is, um, what do you think that we should, like, Like, what, what would your advice be as far as, like, to someone that, um, that needs to read it and that they're interested, but sometimes they don't have, quote, unquote, time? Well, that's when you have lawyers and you have people who advise us. Who will actually go through that, and yeah. you pay them to do that? Mm -hmm. That's the, that's it. That's just the bottom line. You pay them to actually access that data and let you and give you the layman's term. What does this mean? Mm -hmm. That's what that's what it all boils down to. Having someone there and quiet as it's kept. I kind of do it for some people because some things I want to understand myself. Yeah. When the uh, PPP loans came out. 
the very first group, I came across um, a couple of people. I, they showed me the contract. I read the contract, and I gave them my advice. And they were like, no, this is not good for us. Okay, good. Because you have to understand what's going on. They're asking you for certain information, and they're saying that they are going to audit you. Now, if you don't have this information that they're looking for and you take this money, you're committing fraud. And that's what happened. A lot of people committed fraud. Wow. I want people, as a financial literacy instructor, I want people to understand the game. Once you get the game, you can play, you can play the game. Mm -hmm. We're playing in the game without knowing the rules. Mm -hmm. See, once you know the rules, you're like, oh, okay, I got it now. But if you don't know, you're taking a loss somewhere along the line. Let's go. Xavier, any questions? All right, so. I'm, I'm, I'm processing right <laughs> So, but again, and, and, and not to cut you off, Rich, it's fun. Financial literacy, it's, it's, it's habit changing. It's, it's mind forming. It's looking at the world from a different perspective. It's look, I look at the world through a financial lens. And that's what I do. So um, this bottle of water, okay, the bottle had to come from somewhere, the water had to come somewhere. It had, what did it entail to get into my hand right now? Mm -hmm. So when we're talking financial literacy, we're talking about supply chains. We're talking about a whole bunch of stuff. So now we're understanding processes. So now how can I make money off that process? There's a trucking agency, there's a plastic. I might not invest yeah. in the water, but yeah. I can invest in the bottle. I can mm. invest in the, the company. Yeah. You gotcha. know, people, a lot of people don't smoke marijuana, okay? But it's becoming legal in a lot of states. So even though you might not smoke it, you might not agree with it, there are other things that you can invest in. There are trucks that are bringing marijuana from point A to point B. Invest in the trucking system. There's a farm that's farming, invest in the farm. You don't have to worry about the product, but let's look at the whole thing all together so that you can make money across the board. Gotcha. And see, what's crazy, we're having this conversation now, right? The thing that was brought up to me one day, I'm looking, I had to look for health insurance. Okay. Right? I'm looking at this health insurance and I'm going crazy. Because okay. they, they have all these different plans and I'm like, what? This makes no sense. Right. When I tell you I called around every type of person I could call, like it was calling all different places that they was giving me numbers to. It was like, these people should be able to help me. They didn't help me. They sat there. One lady sat on the phone for two hours with me. Yeah. Going through health insurance and she barely helped me with anything. And I just selected something. Then come to find out that was the wrong thing. Somebody yeah. else had to come in and be like, you didn't have this put down. You didn't have this put down. Right. This is why you was getting the things you was getting. And I'm, as I'm looking at these health insurance, I'm like, you can notice what doesn't work for you, you know? But what's crazy is even though you know these things don't work for you in your life, you still have to pay for them. Yeah. It's all this list of stuff. It's like, and then they hike up like yeah. hospital care. Right. If you gotta go to an emergency room. And these prices is high and I'm looking at this stuff and I'm like, how does this make sense? How is this even okay with <laughs> some of the prices that put down there? And the amount, yeah. of, the amount, you may make this amount, but they want you to pay $500 a month. You're making $3,000 right, a month. For health insurance. How does that work? Because yeah. you still got house to pay, your right. rent, your yeah. next, your that. And I was just, I just was, it was so bad. I was at work. And they was like, what are you doing? I was like, Leave me alone for about an hour <laughs> while I navigate this because I need health care right. for me and my child. Right. What am I doing? Right. And mm. when I tell you, it got so bad I had gotten a headache right. mm -hmm. and took a break from it for a day and had to go back because I was like, you know, you have a deadline. What it's a deadline to when you have to have health care now. The, yes. So, the, the important thing is, what did you learn from that experience? <laughs> do, do you see what I'm saying? I learned a lot. See? I learned a lot, and it, it's still what I'm going to tell you. I started looking into some other things. It was like, I need to learn more, so if it has to come down right. to me learning, help, trying to pick a health care plan again, I know something more than this. Right. <laughs> That's it. And that, it, it was the, crazy. The, the learning, the learning the, what you took away from that, nobody else can, nobody can take that away from you. Yeah. What you learned from that. All of that frustration is like, okay. But again, it, it's the game. Mm. It's the game. Remember, the question is, does it benefit them or does it benefit you? 
mostly a good Just thing because it sounds good and looks good doesn't mean it's going to benefit you. It doesn't. Yeah. It doesn't. It doesn't at all. Not at all. So that's the key. Understanding, putting yourself in the middle. Mm. How does this work for me? Um, I got at the turn. I don't know if it's selfish, or, but it's just this. This doesn't work for me. And being able to walk away from the table. Gotcha. This doesn't work for me. Yeah. So I'm glad you brought health insurance because I think that's another thing is another thing we need to learn about health insurance, right? Because right. we can have health insurance through the you know the state that you live in if you right. don't if you don't have it from uh, the company that you work for, right? Mm -hmm. um, or your employ you know your employer. But the thing is about like there's I, I realized that you know there's loopholes to when. We, a lot of us don't know about health insurance because we know it's a business. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. They every time when you visit the doctor right. or you know emergency or something like that, medication. Uh, medication you right. know, is the fifty. You know, just like you know, you get a fifteen. What is it? They say fifteen dollar copay if right. you right. have mm -hmm. insurance some or something. Yeah, some is right. more than that exactly. And it depends on your policy. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah exactly. Right. And then, but then you get a you get something in the mail, and they'd be like, "Oh, you got to pay for this." Right. And they'd be like, yeah. "Hold on for a second. Where, I did, I come from? where did I come from?" Right. Yeah. So, uh, my question to you is: um, Does that boil down to another thing about like we need to learn health insurance too? That's part of financial yes. literacy. Yes. Yes. We. Okay. Let's let's make it let's make it a little bit tighter. We need to understand contracts. Yeah. Because gotcha. that's what a health insurance is. It's a contract. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm paying into this service. What am I going to receive for my payments every single month? Yeah. What don't I receive for my payments every single month? Mm -hmm. And it's all about understanding the contract. Gotcha. So when it comes to insurance period, yes. What am I? What What are benefits? Um, okay. You know what? If If you have an accident between eight and nine on a Friday, you're not covered. Where the hell did that come from? <laughs> in a bad in, in, in a contract. If, yeah. if if you if you if you yeah if you know in you know in insurance policy there are certain things that you can't do. Yeah. There are certain things that you can't do. It ne it negate the policy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now you've been paying into this policy for the last three four years. And now you do that one thing that you're not supposed to do that you didn't know and you're like oh. But oh, no, like, you're not supposed to do that. Mm -hmm. Like ride a motorcycle, right? Ah, but ride a motorcycle, you, right? Yeah, ride a motorcycle. That's like when you do when you're in a finance in a car, lease in a car. Uh huh. They tell you if you get arrested in that car with a gun, your car is gone. Got it. Yeah. If you do, it's certain things. If you do this and you do that, your yep. car is gone. Yep. You ain't got it. You've been paying on this car for how long? Mm -hmm. But that's in the contract. And that can again, that can be negotiated. Yeah, everything can be in writing. It, nobody knows. That. That can be negotiated. Everything got to be in writing. Yes, in okay. writing. Mm -hmm. Because if you go to court and it's there, they have to pay out. Mm. See what I'm saying? Gotcha. If it's there, they have to pay out. If it's not there, then somebody's going to le get left holding the bag. Mm -hmm. okay. So, now mind you, all of this is financial literacy. A lot of people don't understand what finance it's the importance of financial literacy. Again, understanding contracts. If I'm a doctor and I slip, I sneeze mm. and snip something off, you know, does my contract cover that? My insurance cover that. Exactly. Gotcha. You know. So for health insurance, what is something that you want to drop? If you know this, if you don't, then we could switch to another topic. But if you if you if you want to drop a gem, what is it that uh, majority of people don't know about health insurance. That's a good question. Um, what we just talked about, the do's and the don'ts. Like you said, the motorcycle, riding a motorcycle. Mm -hmm. A lot okay. of people don't know about that. Well, that's life insurance, right? Well, it's also health insurance also. Yeah. Gotcha. It's okay. also okay. health insurance uh -huh. also. Okay. So understand, um, again, Knowing what you can and cannot do is the most important thing. Okay. Because, again, you can be paying into this contract for X amount of years, and then you do that one thing. Hey, Rich, Rich got a new bike. Get on the back. Take me down the street. Boom. Go on. Done. Gone. Okay, you weren't supposed to be on that. You know, people go on vacations. They get on scooters. You know, things, you know these small things, and they're like, well, you were out the country at that time. You're not covered. 
You know, these are things. <laughs> and that's why they tell you you have to have insurance when you go out of the country, depending on where you're going. Mm -hmm. You yes. gotta have some type of insurance. Well, you should. You, every time you leave the country, you should have insurance. You should have. Uh, it's called term insurance. You should, have, you should have term insurance every time you leave the country. And I learned that because I lived in California, so we would go down to Mexico. So we would get insurance every day just to go down to Mexico. We did that because we were bad boys back then. You just <laughs> Yeah. Doing, doing stuff, we're like doing stuff, we're like ah, let me let me just get insurance just in case. Make sure that's smart, I don't though. make it back. That's smart though. That's just like that's just like you know if you are uh you know a gang banger a gang they say you know if you a gang banger if you doing all this stuff or whatever that, in though. the street. I'm, no, I'm just saying. No, I'm just saying. I'm just saying the smart way. Like if you a gang banger or whatever, and if you doing what you got to do or whatever. Um, then they say have a life insurance if, if you were smart. But it would make sense. If you they don't think about it that. It would make sense. If you loved and cared about your family, you would have that. In automatic. Place. Life insurance, automatic. You, you know what you're doing. You know the lifestyle you're in. Mm -hmm. Yes. That's what you, if you cared and loved about your family so much, that's what, that, again, that's what it's all about. Yep. Gotcha. Okay. All right. True. So, um, nope. <laughs> all right. So the I was books. thinking about health insurance. Uh -huh. All right, another thing about health insurance. Right, Go ahead. We're going to the books. So the <laughs> books. Let's start with the conspiracy of credit. Where you see that? All right, you okay. Oh, um, right here, right here. Right. No, no, you know, it's up to you. Let, okay, let's do this first. Um, let's look at it. Let's do this first. Um, I bought some books that are top tier. When I mean oh. top tier. Top tier yeah, books. They're top, uh, and these are books that nobody's talking about. Okay. Um, I've studied a lot of books. But I'm only bringing you some of them just to show you if you ever want to get into financial literacy. Um, one of the key books that I really like that um, as a beginner, someone who doesn't understand financial literacy, this is one of the top books that I think mm. you Napkin Finance. All right. Napkin so, Finance. Yeah, so make sure you get that clear. Napkin Finance, okay? okay? So. And what I'll do is I'll make a list for you so you can drop it in so for all so this is an introductory so okay. to financial literacy for the ones that's listening only to audio it says there's a book titled nap napkin finance uh is by tiny hay uh last name is h-a-y okay all right so, got it yes so what she did was she took concepts and put them on a napkin Mm. to make it so simple and then the mm. then there's like one or two pages of the concept for each napkin okay. for each napkin mm. so it's, like a, it's an intro to understanding it, it goes into depth of what the concepts and terms are and what they do mm -hmm. that's why I like about it because once you understand what you're looking for now what you can do is you can go deeper gotcha okay, okay. so now after napkin finance the truth about money okay so for for the audio listeners now the the title of the book that he just picked up is called the truth about money fourth edition uh it's by rick edelman edelman right okay so now understand napkin finance is like the premier this one goes deep 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 into what she's talking about in her work gotcha okay because it makes sense okay gotcha so now, I was looking at this one. The okay. rules of, of money. That, that look like that's a fair, that's one of my favorites okay. right there. The we'll rules, the rules of, money. of money. Okay, got it. Mm. Okay, the rules of money. Uh, that that's by Richard Templer. Okay, Templer. Templer. Okay. okay, Richard Templer. All right. The rules of money. How to make it, and how to hold on to it. Gotcha. Yes. Okay. Okay. Excellent pieces. Now remember, what we have to do is we have to understand the game. Mm -hmm. Once we understand the game, now we're going to get involved in the game. We're going to actually start actively moving money around. Mm -hmm. And wealthy people do not play the same rules as poor people. They do not. And that brings back to what we've been taught mm -hmm. back when we was Wait. young. Um, and like and that goes back to the first um, when you, when we talked about um, the first so when, when you know when you were here the last episode right uh, we wasn't taught right how the, the game of money right 
we was taught of when you grow up, go to school, after you go to school, you spend, get your you education, save, you spend, <laughs> save, park your money, uh -huh. and then when you put it in the bank, after that, when you go to college, if you choose to go to college, then after that, I intern for someone. Right. After I intern for a right. company or work. this, you know, this person, right. after I work, then after that, um, I'm working. I am making, I am making a uh, forty. 40k right. Right. Mm -hmm. um um for the year right right so now that i'm making 40k for the year or 45k for the year then after that i'm good right uh -huh. i'm good right you know and then i can park this right into uh -huh. a um retirement account right got it mm -hmm. and then after when i park this into a retirement account 401k's right. is ira right um when i'm doing that um, I'm waiting until I'm 49, you go. 60 here, years here old. You go, here you go waiting again. But I'm, I'm, I'm waiting until 50, 69 years old. Right. Oh, wait. I'm putting this to a pension plan. I'm right. putting this to a pension to my employer. Fuck, so hold on. Wait, hold on. After I'm doing that, I'm, <laughs> after I'm, I'm good. I, I'm good. So after that, my employer is giving me money because when I wait 20, 30, 40 years, um, I'm I'm getting my money straight from my employer. Right, got it. But then when I retire, I'm good. Okay, I'm so, good. But that's retired. not the fact. That's but, but, not what happened. That's okay. not how it happened. That's what we was taught. <laughs> no, no, I got it. And again, but we're a product of our ancestors, mm -hmm. and Facts. that's what we're that's what we're taught. At the time, that's what they believed in. And that's what worked for them. Uh -huh. Now it's a different time. Uh -huh. It's totally different. So we have to adapt. We have to improvise. We have to figure out the game. Because the game changes. Yeah, so awesome. what we're using is we're using old archaic rules of the game. Yes. And we think it's working, but it's actually not. It's not working. Uh -huh. So then you meet somebody that tells you that you need to look at certain situations, blah, 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 and you look at it and you're like, okay, I see what's going on. Mm. So now, the funny thing is, we talk about the pensions, you talk about the companies, blah, blah, blah. What if the company goes out of business? Mm -hmm. Oh, do you lose that I pension? Have a question about Wait, that. do you lose that pension? You don't lose the pension because remember, it's geared towards the stock market. Yes. It's in the system, right? So you can lose that money too. But, but, if you know anything about corporate raiders, what will they do? They will come in, they will buy the company, they will sell off certain pieces of it, they will actually buy out your pension plan and get you to retire early. See, all this is part of the game. See, what we understand is we can't read half the book, we have to read the whole book. Look at the movie Wall Street. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the Wolf of Wall look Street. At Wall, look at Wall Street, look at what happened, not Wolf of Wall, look at Wall Street. Look at what was going on. Yes. See, th again, these are things that are going on, and you're like, wait a minute, hold on. I've been investing 20 years in this pension, but now someone comes in and buys it, and they're going to reformat, and they're going to close out my pen. What, what's going on here? So that means you lose your money then. You lose your value. Your value of your pension. You lose your value. We have to stop. We have to stop looking at. We have to start looking at value of money. Mm-hmm. Mm value of money and that's the key because once you understand value of money so now if I have a hundred dollars the value of that hundred dollars I can purchase a hundred dollars worth of whatever mm -hmm. but if the value of that money is lower I can't buy the same amount that's what inflation is yes so the value of the money that I have how much is that going to bring me in material goods and yeah. purchases yes and that's what a lot of people don't get so they think that, oh, I have a whole bunch of money, but if it value, if there's no value to the money, you're not gonna be able to make those purchases. So that brings two things to me. One. I'm gonna bring Social Security next, but go ahead. One thing it brings up for me is, I'm still stuck on why they're not teaching this in school to the kids. They don't wanna teach them the financial literacy. But it's like, if y'all teach them why they're in school, if all the crap that y'all teach them in school, y'all don't teach them this, and all the different things. There's some things that's not even completely necessary they need to be teaching in okay. school, but y'all don't want to teach them financial okay. literacy. Remember, who set up the federal education system? 
Right. David Rockefeller. Got right. it. And what did he say? If remember what you, he said? Oh, man. Hold up. Remember, remember what he said? Think about that. Remember what he said? If you... T- Woo! Remember what he said? It's public information. Hold now, on. Now, remember. Now, now, remem- now, remember. Oh. Now, remember. David Rockefeller's organization set up the education system. Mm-hmm. He wanted a population of followers, not thinkers. Right. He said that. Hmm. In so many words. As long as you follow, it's fine. But when you start thinking, now you're going to compete against me. And I don't want that. So now why would I teach you financial literacy when I can just pay you a wage and you're happy? But if I teach you how to manage this and I teach you how to make it grow, you can maybe one day grow up and compete against me. And that's not going to happen. I'm trying to pull the quote of what he said, but it it was definitely something about, you know, I'm going to create an education system for workers, not someone, no, for, 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 you know, people that know how to work with their hands, not with their, not with their, the way how they think. Got it. And see, that's key because the important thing is, um, this is when a lot of the colleges, the black colleges, were being founded. Yeah. And they were asking for money. And you notice a lot of those black colleges were in the South. Yeah. So yes. when it comes to the industrial thing. Yes. Okay. The agricultural piece. And, you know, as long as you're working in, in the fields and as long as you're doing that, they were giving money to these schools. Okay. And that's key. Because mm-hmm. when we talk about Booker D. Washington, it's, it's key because he was the master craftsman. He was getting money. His whole school, mm-hmm. you know, and they were like, oh, fine, you guys in the field, you got, okay, no, no problem. Yeah. But see, that's why a lot of people shit on Booker T because they didn't understand what Booker T was doing. Yeah. Booker T didn't have a school about agriculture. Booker T had a school about learning and teaching. Mm-hmm. So the object was, was to teach the craft and then go back home and teach the community the craft. Mm. So he was creating teachers. He wasn't creating. And that's where the confusion comes in. Yeah. So again, to answer your question, why don't they teach it? It's because, one, you can't teach what you don't know. But two, also you got to understand the curriculum that's going on. So it's like, who's funding the educational system? So that goes to... Go ahead, go ahead, no, go ahead. I, I'm go getting ahead. off the topic of education, so let you finish if you still talk about education. Uh, well, I still got Social Security I want to bring oh, up. So. <laughs> I was going to bring up life insurance, right? Okay. When your life insurance company goes out of business. Ooh. How that works? I don't know. Because I've heard, I've heard I it come I don't up know. recently. I don't know, but that's a good one. I heard a, it come up recently, one. so right, I'm, I'm like, I'm gonna wait, check that. how that works? I'm going to check that. Because, uh, as an example, I have a person who... Their parents set up the life insurance for them. Right. Mm -hmm. And now this particular life insurance is saying that it's out of business. Right. So they're trying to figure out how do they get access to their life insurance now. Oh, that's a good question. That sounds like that's a stock insurance, not a a mutual insurance. I'll tell you what insurance later. Okay, Okay, that's a good, because I would like to check that out. I just heard about it, and I was just like, this doesn't make sense. How does a life insurance go out of business like that? Right. I know how it goes out of business, because bad investments. (laughs) That's yeah. how it goes out of business. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Where, remember, there, there, wherever there's a, a pool of funds somewhere, mm-hmm. they're doing something with that. Mm-hmm. So the question is, what were they doing? And again, here's the thing. When you ask this under management, or you're trusting people to move your money and you don't know what's going on. Gotcha. Mm-hmm. And remember, your value can go up, your value can go down, but they're constantly, every single month, making sure that they get their fees. Yes, mm. They wow. get their fees. So, any more? Because I know you got like a thousand no, questions no. now. <laughs> I want to. I want to get to. All right. So, we're gonna get to social. I want to get to social security. Then we're gonna finish you what uh, okay. Mr. Chuck Finance was for the okay. books, and then Xavier, you can drop all your questions you want. Okay. Of, um, Social Security. <laughs> Let's talk about it. Social right. Security. Got it. What okay. you want to talk about? Um, you know when? Okay, so I, I brings back to. I, I don't like saying poor mentality, but I mean what we was taught, right? right. 
So, and then, you know, we get complaints about, like, uh, they're cutting, you know, they're like, oh, politicians or the people that power at B is going to cut my my uh my social security right uh-huh. you know and i'm saying stuff you, you know where i'm coming from with this I'm about stuff to like add that, to that. Go ahead. cuz no? i'm saying this is a couple of things that i'm noticing one with the social security being cut they were already saying as for our generation yes. we ain't gonna have social security yeah by right. 20 by, period, yeah by 2053 the wealth is going to be zero but right you got people coming from other countries coming here and y'all ready to give them social security like that yep and the ones that's here can't get goddamn thing so, talk. Can you please just give us a gem on Social Security? The reason why they're saying that it's going to hit zero is because no one is funding it like it used to be. Mm. There, there are more people taking out of it than actually putting it into it. When you look at the population growth, it's not as expansive as it was before. There are no, there's no, there's no boom in, in um, in population and children being born. So think about that. If you are taking away more than you're putting back in, somewhere along the line, you're not gonna have anything else. Okay. So okay. that's what they're saying. They haven't proved that theory yet, but the way the numbers look, it does look like it's gonna happen. But what's gonna happen is if that situation happens, the government is gonna have more money printed. It's called a bailout. Mm-hmm. Okay so that people can feel secure because here's what's going to happen and mark my words and listen to me very well there's going to be something that's going to be tragic and it's going to happen i don't know when but it is going to happen because people are going to wake up and go like where's my money people are i mean nationwide where's my money damn you said that if i invest in this you said that if I put money in this, at the end I'm going to receive what I'm supposed to. Mm-hmm. Where is it at? Mm-hmm. I'm demanding after 20 years, 30 years of investing in this 401k. And remember, 401ks are not that old. Sad. Yeah. They're not that old. <laughs> so now, where's where's my money at? Now I can't go back 30 years prior and make changes. No, I want my money, and there's going to be a major overhaul. People are going to be upset. These things. One, I think that's going to be the ones that's in their late 20s, early 30s. That's where it's going to hit when we hit our 50s and 60s. We're going right. to be the ones right. to mm-hmm. be doing that right. more than likely. And then on top of that, does it, with the growth of so many people opening up, becoming, well, how do I say it? There's so many more people opening up their own businesses to work for themselves. Go ahead. Is why... Social Security is not being funded the way it's supposed to be. Well, and, not, well now you got so, it. So. And like well, they well, said, well, they're gonna now. cut medic. They're gonna yeah. cut Social Security. Right. Well, well now you got it. So now, understand more people learn how to play this game. Wealthy people play a different play a different roles than poor people. Sad part is, it's so many that. Are not ready to get up on board with the rest, or that not if they don't, don't if that. they don't if they don't adapt. Let me say not to have the knowledge, but the ones that they're not the, that type of person to wanna, like you said, adapt or right. be able to get their mind. So they're work so they're gonna be that. they're gonna be left behind, hmm. and that's the sad part. They're gonna be left behind. So now the question is, you're hungry. You want to eat. You haven't prepared yourself. How are you going to eat? Mm. You're going to go out there and take it from somebody. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, that's, that's, so yeah, that's... You got it? So you're going yeah. to take it from somebody, but now you're going to come and try to take it from me, but I'm an advocate of firearms. So something's going to happen to you. You know, these are things that you got to think about. You know, but the financial literacy is deep. It's really deep. So if you're not prepared, if you haven't adapted, you haven't changed, now you're hungry, now you got to go out, you got to try to rob somebody, stick somebody in the head, okay? Now you get shot because that person you're trying to rob is a gun advocate. Now what happened? Now who do you blame that on? Somewhere along the line, we got to say to ourselves, I need to learn this stuff. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Somewhere yes. along the line, I, got, I need to, why am I broke at the end of the month all the time? Mm-hmm. I need to learn this stuff. 
So now there are four things that affect your money, and that's all. Four things. Everything falls under, under this category, four categories. Four things that affect your money. One is debt. Drop it, y'all. He's about right? to drop it. Debt affects your money. Got it? Inflation affects your money. Got it? Mm-hmm. Your own decisions. Oh affect no. your money. Yeah. Got it? Oh, say that one more time. Your, your own decisions affect your money. <laughs> that was a ball. And taxes affect your money. Of course. All those four things. Mm. So if you think about any time money leaves your pocket, right? Mm-hmm. It falls under those four, one of those four categories. Debt, taxes, inflation, and your own decisions. Mm. So now here's the key. You can control three of them. You can control your debt. You can control taxes. Got it? Mm -hmm. You can't control inflation. Well, you can control control your decisions. You can control your own decisions. So when you understand those four things, you're like, okay, how do I manage that? Mm -hmm. How do I manage my taxes? How do I manage the income that's coming into my pocket so that I pay less taxes? How do I do that? See what I'm saying? How do I control my debt? Am I, do I have too much bad debt or not enough good debt? How do I make these changes? Again, we're, we're changing, okay? My own decisions. No, I'm not giving you that loan without collateral. Mm. Well, you know I'm good for it. Yeah, I know you're good for it, but I need the collateral. Because <laughs> just in case, if you don't give it back, I got a collateral that I, I can take this and I can pawn and get my money back. Gotcha. Mm. And how- You see what I'm saying? <laughs> And these are things that we got to think about. Wealthy people play by holy, solely set different rules than poor people do. So, how can you kind of answer the question when you say how to manage the taxes? Because I know they're going. I, I, I know it. So I, I, I have to ask this question. There you go. <laughs> How Never mind. Your taxes. That come into that's play. how you control. But that's look, how you control your taxes right here. With Lower the money your you taxes. In, yeah, but that doesn't They're that come into bump. play with the money that you have coming in? What's that? Doesn't that come into play with the money that you have coming in? Uh huh. And how you navigate, like you said, the decisions you make. Well, if you're working, okay. So if you're working, you know, for a, you know, for someone or a corporations, um, yeah, you can. You, you can. Yes, um, taxes will be taken out regardless. But what I'm saying is, you're working for somebody else, or a corporation or whatever, right? You yes. have that. But then you have other streams of income coming in. Yes. Got it. That right. brings up your income. Your yeah. Income. Got it. Uh-huh. But even though you have that going on, there's other ways where you could also make, like I said, it comes down to lowering your taxes. Yeah, you have that coming in, but if you file it this way or that way with certain things, yes. you, know, you can get it lower. You get it lower. There's more money so, in your pocket. So, all in all. I just want, I, I, I want to get that on camera. <laughs> I want to get that on camera. Lower yeah. your taxes <laughs> big Sandy. time. Small business wealth building a tax reduction secret from an IRS insider by Sandy Bodkin. Bodkin, uh, CPA. Right. Oh, that's that's a CPA. Again, okay. These are books that nobody's talking about. Okay. Uh, this is, yo, this chapter, is good. Ch- read, this is good. Just read the chapter one of the the first. Um, what does that read. say? What'd you say? Why you, why you would be brain dead not to start a home-based business? That's chapter one. Go. Now Sandy Bakken worked for the IRS. This is He's good. He's an insider. He left mm. the IRS and started teaching people financial literacy. This is mm. good. So this is go. in. Okay. <laughs> That's this, this is the next one. Ooh. Hold on, I've y'all. I've been looking at that book the whole time. So facts, right? <laughs> all right. So for all, for the audio listeners again, I. Please put that on camera too. The tax, tax and, and legal playbook. Yo, oh, what's your cash app? <laughs> what is your cash app? <laughs> what, hold on, hold on. Drop it. Listen, listen, listen. What is your cash app? <laughs> I, I don't listen, you know what? This is what I'm going to do. 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 Cash app got two cash problems. Cash app. Listen, cash app, diamond cash rich four, number four. Um, and then I'll send it to Charles. <laughs> but how about I, that? But, yes. But how about that? Cash app again. Yeah. Now, cash app, now right? remember, what we do is, anytime we, we're dealing with the IRS, we go straight to the IRS website. 
because mm -hmm. we have to verify yes. our yes. information and data. That's all that's to it. So if it says that in the IRS, it's a legal, you can actually apply whatever. It's, it's okay, it's approved. When people get audited, they fear the audit. You don't have to fear the and audit. And they just do what they tell them. If your stuff is above board, you don't have to fear it. Yes. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times the audit is about a line item or something that they're questioning. Okay, oh, you know what, your LLC, you, okay, we talked about this, okay. Why did you order a million bottles of water and put that as a tax write-off? Mm -hmm. You can't do that, okay? You are not in the business of water. You can't do that. But you took this water and you put your label on it. That's the tax write-off. So if you go to, to the auditor and you're like, okay, well, look at the bottle. This is the bottle I bought. This is the label. This is advertising. Oh, that's perfectly legal mm -hmm. according to IRS tax code. So if mm -hmm. I... So, do, do you see what I'm hold saying? On, hold 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 on. You heard exactly so, what he said. So, hold on. So if let's say if I go to the sneaker store or something, right? I go to the sneaker store, right? I buy what is it? Nike, whatever, Adidas. Okay, got it. Yeah. Then I put my print. I refuse to that's, turn my vision to right. That's it. I, I, I refuse to turn my uh -huh. vision to ashes. Right. That's it. On the sneaker. That's it. Mm -hmm. That's the write off. That's advertising. Advertising. That's advertising. Oh. Oh, but see, and again, <laughs> again, the audit, the audit is about the proof mm -hmm. of the line item. Uh. Okay, so it's, if you can explain what they're asking you, you're going to be clear. If you can't, it's like, you know what, I can't take that, I accept that. They're going to redo the numbers and give you a different number. And that's it. All it is is like, why, why did you make this purchase? Because again, what we're looking at is, if I'm not in the water business, yep. I yeah. shouldn't be buying a million bottles of water. Right. But if I am in the water business, I'm gonna buy a million bottles of water. Gotcha. Yes, understood. We that book one more time, right. please. Tax and legal. Hold on. So Ooh. the tax, the 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 tax and, and legal, legal playbook, playbook. Right. game change solution for your small business question. Right. Yes. Mark Jake or CPA attorney. So okay. Mark Carlo. Yes. I, I Mark Carlo. Cool. Okay. Mark so everyone. So that means that even if you work a nine to five. That, that just means that everyone should have, even if you're not an entrepreneur, you know, you should be like a, at least an investor or something what to is, lower your what taxes. Is, what is the first, the first chapter in here said? You got to be brain dead. <laughs> you got to be. Yeah. You need a home business. You need got a it. home business. Point got it. it. You that, that means setting up an LLC then. Got it. Even you if you have, know it. even if you have a nine to five, even That's if you're fact. not a, even if you're not an entrepreneur. Have a bit, have even if you're, you're not an entrepreneur, have an LLC in there place over, yes. to invest. There are over 200 deductions that you can take when you have a business. Come on, that man. you cannot take if you are just a regular nine to five. Come on, okay. Come on. Listen, how can, how can they? How can they? Cash we gonna make shop, this work. Sell. Come on, talk. Let's, let's, okay, let's okay. Let's talk do this. Let's, let's do this real quick. Yourself. Let's do this real quick. Okay, got it. So this. Uh, John Hope Bryant, I, I, all his work. They're going to have to pay for this work. information. Five I'm sorry, man. They're going to have to pay for this. For your <laughs> economic uh, The five liberation. rules for your economic the liberation. Memo. Okay. The memo. Mm. John Hope Bryant. I hope they're getting that. Yeah. Mm. Let's go. Now, remember, there's mindset and there's application. Mm hmm Okay. This is all about mindset. Mm hmm Understanding the game. Okay. Okay. These books... Their application teaching you okay. how to play the game. Mm -hmm. So understand once you get it, you're like, okay, wait a minute. Why am I buying a car when I should lease it? And then that's a tax write off through my business. Stop. Mm. Slow it down one Here more time. Go. What you just said. Okay. Why, why should, I, should I buy a car? car? Right. When I should actually be leasing it through my business. And I can. Tax write-off. Tax write-off. Got it. Okay. I hope, I hope I got that clear. Now, understand, remember, what we're going to do is we're being taxed on our earned income. Yeah. But if we can drop our earned income, if you look at those tax brackets, I'm going to pay less in taxes. That's what it's all about. Mm. That's what people don't get. Um, 
Now let's go to the next one. Okay. How to outsmart the credit bureaus. Okay, this is, <laughs> yes, this is, this is where credit, you know, this is everything you... It says everything, everything you, you ever needed to know about credit bureaus. Who is it by? Damn. Got it. Who Who's it by? Corey P. Smith. Car okay, so all the audio listeners, y'all got that. Okay. Corey P. Smith. Listen, mm. man, y'all gonna have to don't... Corey P. <laughs> Corey P. Smith is the man. Let's Remember, go. all these books that I showed you, and I just bought a few, nobody's talking about them. <laughs> nobody's talking about them. Corey this is the man. And once... Once um, once we're off camera, I'll tell you something about Corey. Conspiracy of credit. I just opened this part. Corey P. Smith. Yo. I, uh, hold on. Wait, wait. Wait, you so, gotta read what wait, he wait, says. Wait, wait, wait. So, all right, guys. So the on camera, the conspiracy of credit by Corey P. Smith. Same, same brother. And, now, read the rest and, of that and then the rest oh, of it Corey, says, Corey, Get? Corey, if you hear this, the next time you come to New York, you better call me. And they <laughs> who? Uh uh, we gotta read the rest of that though. Uh -huh. It says, Debt and they who control the credit of the nation, what? Nation hold in the. You got it? I'm trying to get it together over here. Oh, okay. <laughs> and the Go ahead, take the book. Ooh, I'm over here trying can, to read can it. Can right? I read the fine print? Go ahead, go ahead. Wait, <laughs> wait, wait, wait. The history of credit bureaus. This is only a tip. Right. It says the only way to defeat any enemy is to know where he is and as well as who he is and the weapons he has as is at his disposal. I'm going to give you a brief history of the three credit bureaus and the people. Listen, man, that's it. Got it. That's it. Which is Experian. Equifax, Tran Trans Equifax and TransUnion. Okay. And you Come know that they're, they're all they're, you cut. they're public <laughs> they're public companies. You got to you know, okay. what's on the head. You know that okay. because they're public companies, you can actually file a claim against them. Whoa, yeah. They're, pub they're public think. companies. Got it? Mm. I might have to put this on a this, um, this type of, I don't know, this I'm just, type I'm, of, again this, this episode remember, I might have remember, to put this on premium. Remember what I <laughs> remember what I said? <laughs> that puzzle, that one piece. Yes. If you get that one piece, it's like, oh my it, I understand it all now. Yeah. All of these will get you to understand the real stuff of what's going on. Mm -hmm. Okay. What we know is what's being shown to us. But you have insiders and you have people who are like, let me drop some stuff to you. Mm -hmm. I've been in this business for so long. Let's let me show you, let me show you what they're doing. Let me show you what they really do. Let me tell you something. I got situations where people have told me things where I had a young lady, she sent her mortgage payment into a bank. Right? She get a call from the bank, she didn't they didn't get the payment. Wow. What do you mean you didn't get the payment? So now she's talking about foreclosure. What are you yeah. talking about foreclosure? Okay? Sure enough, what she did was she sent the FedEx. So now calls FedEx, blah, 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 got the signature, blah, blah, blah. Oh, call back, okay, oh, we found it. See, these are games that they play. Yep. Mm. These are games that they play. I'm talking about banks, mortgage companies that they play. You write a check or you send a payment and they're like, oh, we didn't get it. Yes, you did. Prove it. See, if you're not paying attention, it's like an account that takes 10 cents off and you don't see that 10 cents. But if they did a thousand people, if they did a million people, that 10 cents adds up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And see, this is again that fine print that we're, we're looking at. Like, oh, okay, I, I got it. And you know what? It's, it's like they can take a hundred people and make a mistake and no one sees it. Mm -hmm. And then they go to another state and do it. You know, all of these things are adding up. Mm. Okay. This the one last here. Book, last book, y'all. This is the last, last book, This one, last this one, this one is. This one is not for lightweights. <laughs> web of okay. the. You mean not for beginners? No, it's not for beginners. The web of debt. The shocking truth about our money system. And how we can break free. Okay. <laughs> this is not. I, I just bought this so people can have an idea that there are levels to financial literacy. All of this. That's is why the first one, wow. Napkin Finance, helps you understand. And then if you want to go deeper, 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 
you can progress into some real, real stuff. Gotcha. Um, and that's what the key thing is about. And also being able to have a conversation of understanding that when it comes to life insurance, when you're having a conversation with a life insurance agent, you can ask questions and they go like, oh, you know about that. Yeah, I know about that. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I was asked no questions recently. I just I just ghosted the day of life insurance people. Yeah. I ghosted them. I just stopped answering them because right. I was asking them questions and they had half answers for it. Right. So and as I was asking, I was just like, I'm reading and then I'm also reading the contract and I'm just like Right. It just got to the point I stopped answering them and I was like, I'm not doing this no more. Right. I didn't even want to tell them I don't want to do this or nothing. I just stopped answering them. Because I was just like, y'all don't even know what I'm talking about. They don't. Way. They're only there to fill out paperwork and sell a product. That's it. Yep. Sell That's a product. It is. And then, what happens is, I don't want people to, at the end, when they think that they're expecting something and they don't get it. Mm-hmm. And you can't go back in 20, 30 years, 10 years and, and change that. You can't do that. You've wasted time. Yeah. Yep. You've wasted time. So now we talk about Social Security. We talk about all of this. The key that I think that we need to focus on is cash flow. Mm-hmm. Once we understand cash flow, how can I take my money and invest it into cash flow? That's what it's all about. Because once we understand cash flow, no matter what, when it comes to inflation or whatever, I'm always got to study cash flow. Mm-hmm. And that's what the key is. So now I'm not worried about Social Security. I got constant cash flow. I'm not worried about an, uh, something happening when it comes to uh, an accident or something. I got current cash flow. I got cash flow constantly coming in. And now we're talking about real estate. We're talking about real estate investment trusts. We talked about that before. Mm-hmm. Yep. You know, that's what we, we're talking about systems. You know, if why am I getting 0.003% when I can take this, put it in a real estate investment trust, and I can make constantly every single month 50 or 60 bucks? That's much more than what you're giving me when it's parked there sitting there and I make a point zero zero three cent. And again, this is what we're talking about investing, financial literacy. This is what they don't want you to know. The banks don't want you to know this. My problem with the banks is this. The object of the bank is to do what? Make money. They're making money off you. I talked about this before, fractional reserve, fractional lending. So understand that for every dollar that you put in the bank, they can loan out 90% of -hmm. that dollar. Got it? 90%. So if I put $10 in a bank, they're loaning out $9. It's called fractional reserve lending. This is legal what they do. So now here's the thing. They have a program that family and friends day. You bring your family members, your little children, three, four years old, teach them how to invest and how to save, blah, blah, blah. So if I got a five or six year old and I'm teaching them how to come to the bank and how to put money in the bank, their little sense of blah, 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 blah. So now we're talking about six years old, we're talking about someone that's doing this on a constant basis for until they're 18. It's not a lot of money, but how much money did that make for all those years of those dollars that are put in? How much money did they make? But that's where, that's, for stuff like that, that's where it breaks down for me. I'm like, just how the banks is doing that, we need to break it down for the kids so that they can learn financial literacy. Yeah, got oh. it. So they can learn financial literacy. They need Instead to learn. Instead of going to doing that, going to the bank to right. do all of that. Right. How are we going to, we got to find a way. Break it down for five, like you said, five, right. six year olds to understand so, no, so, and learn. So now as parents, Again, as parents, what we need to do is we talked about insurance at the very beginning. We need to set up those insurance policies. So when we set up those insurance policies, we can borrow off ourselves. (laughs) You see that? But do the banks want that? No. No. So this is how it works. What we're trying to do is we're trying to be the catalyst for the future of our families. Yes. And we are the ones that are actually breaking the chains and the molds. And we're suffering because we're getting out of what we're doing so that when our kids come up, no, you don't have to do that. We, we got you covered. Mm-hmm. What is it that you want? Show me show me the model. Show me the game plan. And if I like it, I'll invest into it. I have a, a person, um, the, the woman got upset because she wanted to invest in a project. And I'm kind of like the advisor, so I said, okay, well, let me see the numbers. 
she couldn't show me the numbers. But she was enthusiastic. She was happy. She was excited. I was like, yeah, I got it. Let me see the numbers. She couldn't show me the numbers. So if I can't see the numbers, it doesn't make sense to me. And she had a lot of great, wonderful ideas. I'm like, okay, but show me the numbers. She wanted to open up an event space. I said, okay, yeah, that's I can see that. But the questions that I asked her, she got defensive and upset. I'm like, I understand what you're saying, but when it comes to this money, you're not fronting this money, somebody else is. And my job is to protect that money. So the questions I was asking her was, how many days are you gonna have it open during the week? What programs are you gonna have? What happens if you don't keep it open during the week? You know, are you gonna get paid? Are you fronting, are you doing marketing? And all these things, she couldn't have those answers. I was like, until you get those answers for me, we can move forward, but now it's again that enthusiasm thing doesn't pay the bills. Yeah, mm-hmm. everybody's Absolutely. excited. Yeah. Got it. So I said, boils down to nothing. <laughs> if, if if you got nothing, we can close this out. <laughs> this is too. This is. This they is had oh, a lot of. That's it. Well, that's well, it for the well, audience. Well, what I what I want, mm-hmm. what I wanted the audience to understand is that if there's one takeaway is. We are designed not to know what we know. Mm-hmm. And it's not your fault. But if you listen to this, now it's your fault. Mm. Mm. Now it's your fault. Mm. Because this platform has opened up the door for you to ask questions and start going like, you know what, I need to think about that. Mm-hmm. I need to start moving. I need to start adapting. I need to read some of these books. I need to, you know what? I need to get more actively involved in my life when it comes to my finances. Let me find out why Why am I always short at the end of the month? And it's very simple. Yeah. It means your expenses are higher than your income. Hmm. So let me look at my expenses. Okay, what am I spending money on that I don't have to? Okay, you know what? Let me trim that off right now. Gotcha. So now you know what? For the month of February, I was able to pocket $25. That's $25 in January I didn't have. March, let me see what else. Okay, you know what? I can now, I can trim that. Now I've saved in the month of March $50. And that's what it's all about. It starts small. So now once you start slow, you're like, okay, now when you start, again, developing these habits, you're like, oh, okay, now, now let me see what else, what else I don't need. <laughs> Do you see what I'm saying? And now you talk about Starbucks and people, you know, okay, people got to buy Starbucks every single day. I know people like that. Okay, but if you want to seriously, if you want to seriously trim, okay, you know what? I'm going to do Starbucks three times a week. Okay, two times a week. Okay, Tuesday and Thursday, I'm not going to do Starbucks. So $5, let's say. Mm-hmm. I'm going to take that $10 and I'm going to pocket it away. That's $40. Gotcha. A month of mm-hmm. not drinking Starbucks every other day. Weed they, smokers. They, Weed smokers. Go ahead. That's another thing go about ahead. that. They yeah, think that that's, that's a part of, not to take away from, you know, weed, but I'm just it's, saying it's about. Legal, it's legal now in New York. No, I'm yeah. just saying it's legal now, but I'm just saying, ex, <laughs> you know, expenses way. Like, you know, when we, when exactly, a day, a, a day sold, just smoking. Just right. to smoke. Just to smoke. And my, my question. It's nothing bad about. Okay. It's nothing that's bad at all. So I'm so just now, saying your so expenses. Like okay. Do so you now. have, do you have. Okay. So okay. now, so now watch this. You know what? Sandy Bakken said I'd be brain dead not to have a home-based business. It's legal in New York. Okay, you know what? Let me create a blog about weed. There you go. Now, I get my receipts for my weed because it's legal in New York. Mm-hmm. Now we're talking about a tax write-off. Uh, am I correct? Solve that problem. So now, you, you're, you're doing, and you're doing a blog, you're talking about weed, you know, do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Creating a podcast. Now you're getting people to come in and talk about it. Oh, how do you flip it? That, that's what financial literacy is all about. How do you flip it? How do you make it legal? Yeah. 
And that's what it's all about. I'm not saying don't smoke weed, mm -hmm. but let's <laughs> let's figure out how we can make this a business. <laughs> and then and then you want to you want to make more money? Let's start getting affiliates on my web on my podcast. <laughs> For all the weed smokers, he just gave y'all a gem of what, what? to see do. What see he just do? gave y'all a gem what easy, to do. Easy, easy. Do, do you see that? <laughs> if you're gonna do it anyway, let's make some money off of it. Mm -hmm. If you're gonna do it on a daily basis, let's make some money off of it. Mm. No, let's close it out. Got it. Okay. You already gave your final thoughts. He just <laughs> like oh I can't God. even like I'm stuck. So <laughs> how can they reach you? How can they you know Chuck it? Finance on TikTok and Chuck Finance on Instagram? Okay. All right. So how can, how can they uh, fund you? I'm serious. How, no, Cash App, like, Zelle, whatever. Like, nah. Oh, oh, you know what I forgot to talk about? Um, all right. Um, Chuck Finance on Instagram. Reach out to me if you want to fund me. Um, that's fine. Yes, fund me, Chuck, and I'll send you some information. Zell. I don't do Cash App because Cash App be they funky. <laughs> Cash App, the Cash App is funky. Okay, but um, I'm starting the class next month. Which class? The Penny Stock class next month. Let's go. I'm starting go. it next month. Okay, and that's why this month I'm promoting the whole thing. Um, mm -hmm. So starting a penny stock course, it's a three month course, you will be actually trading live with no money. During the day? Or well, whenever you want to trade. Okay. In okay. Person, Remember when it comes to... In it person comes or remote? To, no, through Zoom. Okay. Through Zoom. Zoom. Um, so now what we're doing is we're going to start set up the class and you're going to actually be trading. The key to trading is the studies. Because gotcha. okay. the trading is that's simple inputting. Okay. It's studying what you're looking at. So that's going to happen starting next month. So if you really want to get into it, you got to hit me up. You got to actually let me know. Um, so that and also the credit class, credit repair, the business yes. credit. Yes, yes. the there business right credit. That that's too. coming up too in New York. So that's going to be something major. That's going to be in New York. That's going to be live though. Okay. okay. So um, just letting you guys know. So if you guys are interested, when you hear me out. Um, Shout me out and uh, let me know that you heard about me on the podcast and we'll work something out. Let's Get go. You guys involved. All right. Got that's, it? That's no it. Problem. That's, a, that's, it work. Right. that's the end of the episode. All right. Yo, this is, I like this Yo. one. I think you, yeah. this I think one. you guys a lot. <laughs> we did. I, I don't even know if I should, I, I should make this public or premium. Well, I mean, so you decide. Listen. You decide. Listen, right. we gonna Listen. wherever you're Listen. Right. You the boss. So yeah. all good. You the yeah. boss. So we can we can we can do this. All right. So yeah. thank you, uh, Chuck Finance, all right. and on to the next one. Peace right. out. Thank That's you. Right. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> That's the end of the episode. Thank you. Thank you. Out. That was crazy.